The Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project has urged President Mohamed Buhari to urgently redirect the proposed spending of 4.8 billion naira of public money to monitor WhatsApp messages, phone calls and text messages of Nigerians and other people to pay some of the salaries of striking resident doctors. Well, joining us to discuss this is Serap Deputy Director Kolawoli Uluadari. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Luadari. Great. Um, this is really um, uh, uh, the resident doctors' strike and the issues that are bedeviling the health sector seems to be a very big, in fact, a major front burner issue. Whether it's the striking doctors or the fact that these doctors have to deal with um, COVID nineteen and 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 uh, you know the fact that they're being paid a, a meager amount of money as hazard allowance. Now, um, many have spoken about in fact, put them side by side with members of the National Assembly who have been receiving newspaper allowances and hardship allowances. And these are doctors who care for Nigerians who work in the harshest of conditions to take care of our sick people. And all they're asking for is a payment or um, an agreement that government had made for them to redeem that agreement. But now we hear that um, the government is taking them to court. Um, why did Serap decide to, you know, make this warning or rather issue this warning to the presidency uh, thank you very much uh, you should understand that, that what you call a warning is uh, a, it's contained in an open letter that the serap and waiting to president or another guy asking him to fulfill his consumer duties and perform his role as the president of nigeria as you rightly mentioned the issue is much more important it, particularly in view of the target of COVID-19, what well, we the devastation, we've seen it uh, due to other countries and what might be uh, coming in Nigeria. And this is against the background of the argument that the striking doctors have claimed that government has signed, that government has refused to fulfill. And it's, it, it would seem that this is uh, not fulfilling the agreement on the part of the government, but probably about paucity of funds. And we saw it just last month that uh, the president uh, signing the supplementary budget of about over 900 billion there. And so the question is, is it that the government of our funds to take care of striking doctors, particularly in view of the total of COVID-19? And then this is government that budgeted about about 4 billion there to what is called, uh, what is the better term that's each dropping uh, spending, uh, permitting the national security agencies to spend over 4 billion there to intercept or listening, as you may call it, uh, to WhatsApp messages and other private communications of Nigerians. It is just a case of misplaced priority, particularly given the fact that these uh, actions, if this funds are used for what it is uh, it, it, it is going to be a breach of the fundamental rights of Nigerians to privacy, which of course is guaranteed by Section 44 of the Constitution. So the question which we ought to ask, this software, is this the best we can spend those funds in view of striking doctors, in view of the state of our primary health care and our health centers uh, generally? I think the answer is a, is a no. I mean, you literally jumped the gun, but I will come back to that. I'll put a plug, uh, a pin on that one, because um, I want to talk about the legality of you know, is dropping on Nigerians. But let's stay on the resident doctors. Um, we all know that we're fighting a pandemic, a very deadly one, by the way. And I, I, the doctors cannot say because there is a pandemic, so they would not work. Of course, they have to work and they have to deal with this. Um, so this is the case that they're making. But the latest about this resident doctors who are striking, who have did, re, refused to budge, by the way, uh, is that the government is taking them to court. Um, uh, can you explain to us why the federal government would be taking its own resident doctors, the doctors who are working, again, I would like to re-emphasize, under the worst conditions? I have been to... Um, three different university teaching hospitals where touch lights were being used to sometimes um, conduct surgeries because there is no diesel in the generator or there's no light in the hospital. I have seen cases where I had a sick parent and I had to take that parent to the hospital. I had to buy everything down to the scissors and the lint and the gloves that the nurse was going to wear. So why would the government be taking these doctors to court if they're asking for something that is deserving of them? Thank you. You've painted the, the, the 
factual situation that operates in Nigeria hospitals in the health sector in Nigeria presently. So the morality of the government action in going to court can be said uh, not to be right if you look at it. Of course, the law permits the government also as uh, an organ of state to approach the National Industrial Court that has jurisdiction to entertain type of that of this matter. So it's not about the legality of it, but about the rightness of it, particularly at this time. And like I mentioned, why is the government going to court? I've not seen the court papers filed by the government, but I would like to know what is their grounds for the striking doctor. Are they saying they did not try to find sign an agreement with the striking doctors? Are they saying they are not possible to the agreement they signed some couple of months ago? And I will most interested than in them to see that. But really, I, I would struggle to see any justification that government say or do to show where they have to remit on an agreement to pay the striking doctors. And these are doctors who have put their life on the line uh, to battle COVID 19 and to rescue Nigerians by doing. And the doctors are claiming that they are being good for. To see no salary in some states, and that that is yet to be paid. So it will be interesting to see the level the case that the federal government is making at the national district court. But really, uh, given the situation that Nigeria is in present, I, I don't think that it is the right thing for the federal government to do. At best, they should have fulfilled the obligations they signed with striking doctors. Let the doctors come back to work, commit to redefining and reworking the health sector, and I'm sure all the Nigerians will better for including uh, those in government themselves. So you're saying that this is a this is a case of is it's a case of morality or rather rightness and legality. So the government is well within their rights to take these doctors to court. But the basis of this conversation, as we all know, is the fact that there was an agreement that was signed but was reneged upon. So if government has now taken these doctors to court, I'm not, I'm not saying that you should preempt anything you know that is in court. Um, but how, what, what, how much grounds in terms of legality do they have on these resident doctors? And it's not just one hospital. We have resident doctors across the country. And I also want to bring in the no work, no pay you know, line that the government always pushes when people go on strike. Um, under any government, whether it's um, a democratic government, especially a democratic government, don't people have a right to go on strike if they are striking for the right, you know, the right reasons? Uh, and again, could we also say that these doctors are being a bit selfish, knowing that the hospitals can't really do without resident doctors? Thank you very much. Um, the law preserves the rights of, of, of workers to strike as a legitimate and legal means of pressing on their demands. And that is why it is very interesting to see the court papers filed by the federal government and even the legal arguments or the factual circumstances that they placed before the National Industrial Court for the first to decide over this matter. I would struggle to see the morality or the rightness of whatever claims the government would have, particularly against the backdrop of the argument they've signed with that all. And so it, I don't have access to the court papers. I've not seen the argument in court and what is the case of the government. But like I mentioned, I would struggle to see the rightness of such um, actions by the government. The war, no work, no pay will really, to me, it sounds like uh, the bullying, the striking doctors who have gone to, who have gone on strike legitimately. They trade these folks out and then the constitution guarantees the right of the uh, of workers uh, to go on strike as a way of pressing on the demands. They have not done anything on law. And I'm very much hopeful that the National Industrial Court in there decided about this matter and in determining the issues will render substantial justice and decide the case in favor of the striking doctors and order the federal government, whatever their case will be before the court to fulfill the arguments that they, they, they signed with the striking doctors and even go further uh, to make sure that the welfare of the doctors are paramount and not only the striking doctors, the resident doctors in this instance, but all health workers in general. I'm interested, I would, I would really like to have a conversation with um, the Minister of Health, uh, Mr. Hanare, because, I mean, this is his constituency and he also sits on that presidential committee on COVID were dealing with a Delta variant in this case. And, uh, and I'm wondering, why, why is it so difficult for government to come to the table and have an agreement, stick to it, so that our doctors can go back to the hospitals and deal with this Delta variant and keep people safe? Again, this, uh, the Minister uh, of Labor, Dr. Chris Ngigi, had spoken some time ago saying that doctors should not go to... Um, should not be running abroad to, you know, for greener pastures because he, he made a very funny statement about, you know, hazard allowance. 
But we see much, I mean, many, many doctors fleeing the country uh, because of, you know, the harsh situations and the conditions that they have to work uh, under. At this rate, are we going to have more people want to go into this medical field or study and, and become resident doctors or any kind of medical experts in Nigeria if this is how um, the, the government is treating those who are already in the system? Of course, the answer is obvious. Nobody wants to go to this kind of business or venture or call it a profession for the treatment that the Nigerian government is making out of doctors. But we should all understand that this is not only the doctors in that it affects perhaps every spare of every spare of the boy in Nigeria. And that shows the insensitivity of government to the plight of Nigerians, the lack of commitment to socioeconomic rights of Nigerians. We are facing the, this is a data variant. And we've seen government. Uh, what we see, what they said more more shows that it's more believes uh, to fighting COVID nineteen and all the all the privileges that we have in the health sector. What we would expect government to do right now is to ensure that everyone in the health sector, the workers in the sector, are well taken care of. And we are not talking only talking about their pay in the correct expenditure. We're talking about capital expenditure, having the base, having the base. We're talking about PPEs, having the, correct, the right infrastructure to even attend to the Nigerians. Uh, it's, it's really sad that the Nigerian government will be playing this game at this very important and this dicey moment uh, in, in, the, in, in fighting the pandemic. And I hope this is resolved very soon in the interest of, of Nigerians. Not only in the interest of doctors, but also Nigerians who will need this medical attention, if not for coordinating the other aliens that are still with us in Nigeria. Before I let you go, I did put a pin on something. Let's go back to the WhatsApp um, situation. 4.8 billion, that's a lot of money to be eavesdropping and the word eavesdropping or listening in doesn't necessarily sound legal to me and you're a lawyer explain to us how this would be legal let's not forget that we still have the twitter ban hanging over our heads even though the government uh you know the agf had gone on the record to say that nigerians have not been stopped uh, from using twitter i still do not understand what he meant by that but here we are talking about monitoring whatsapp messages which also has attached to it people's personal phone numbers and text messages. Explain to me how this is going to work. For the record, the Attorney uh, so General is simply stating the law following the judgment of the court. There's another vehicle was obtained by Sarah and over 100 Nigerians, refraining so the Nigerian government from taking any step in that arresting, harassing, or prosecuting anyone that they use this Twitter. And again, what we've seen with this uh, executive bill and the accent to the bill by the president shows this administration's commitment to fighting freedom of expression. That is the only way to look at it, and that is the fact. And to answer your question directly, there is no way either this appropriation or the funds, the, the expenditure, can be legal. It's clearly unlawful. Section 44 of the Constitution clearly guarantees the right of all Nigerians to privacy. And that privacy includes the privacy to not only own a phone, but to the contents of those phones, to have secure conversations with anyone you like. You are not breaking the law. And so what the government is doing is clearly against the law. They are making over four billion there. So you can imagine what that could do in the sector. And I'm sure if that is diverted, uh, committed to paying the striking of it would offset, if not all of their demands are able to provide uh, infrastructure for the hospitals. And this is the same government that's between the provisions of the law to think that the National Health Act 2014 provides that there should be minimum one percent, minimum one percent of the considerable revenue fund that should be committed to the health sector. And 10% of that fund is meant to be used to pay salaries, uh, human resources in the health sector. And we have this government, a supplemental budget for that matter, which is an ex is extra uh, to the, what we have presented in 2020. That's over now, right? it's 3 billion there. Taking 4 billion to breach the right to privacy of Nigeria, it is so, so sad. And this again is a consistent move by what we've seen in this administration to infringe on the right of expression in Nigeria. And it is important to know in this instance, if the NSC has this power and they spend this money at the Fed, they will, it will not only breach the right of freedom of expression, but also it is not only breach the right of freedom of pri the privacy, rather, it will breach the right of freedom of expression because it means all your conversations, all your all the on your phone, your WhatsApp, is quite open to government. Uh, and this is government that we've seen more often than not, uh, breaches the order of court, acts the uh, uh, Oh my goodness. And so it, this is clearly. 
Oh, well, I, I think we're losing you because the connection because the connection is going bad. But Kolawa Luwadare is the Deputy Director of SERAP. Thank you so much for speaking with us. I'm hoping that we can have you back here to talk more on this issue of the WhatsApp monitoring uh, from a legal angle. But thank you for speaking with us. Well, we have to go. We want to thank you all for being part of the conversation tonight on Plus Politics. Tomorrow, we're coming back with more conversations around the polity in Nigeria. I am Mary Do have a good evening.